All right. How many of you would say that you're at least somewhat familiar with HTML? Okay. All right. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cover a couple different ways that you can uh, create navigation um, for your Flash project. This is relevant really um, for your photo gallery, because you might want to do something along this, those lines for that. And it's also relevant for your final project. And I'll give you a bunch of options in doing this, and you can pick the one that that, that seems appealing to you. That there's advantages and, and disadvantages of doing it um, all the different ways. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, you can see which one makes sense to you. The first one we're going to talk about works like this. We're going to take. I assume we're doing a photo gallery, and we're going to take, we have, I have only two pictures, pretty simple, alright, I'm going to make thumbnails for each of those pictures, and when you click on one, it'll take you to that particular animation. So, in order to do this, I'm going to have effectively three pages. I'm going to have a home page that's going to have two thumbnails and a message that maybe explains what the photos are and explains how to navigate. I'm then going to have a web page for the first picture and a web page for the second picture. Well, three HTML documents, and I will have <coughs> two Flash SWF files. The advantage of this is we're separating each SWF file into its own thing. That may make it a little easier to manage. You don't have one gigantic SWF file that has everything in it. It also will keep from having to load a giant SWF file if the user only wants to see one or two pictures. All right. So if you bring up this page and they want to see the first one and not the second one, they can click on the first link. All right. They can see the first picture. If they decide they don't want to see the second or the third or the fourth, then they don't click on those links. Those pictures don't have to load. Some of the other approaches that we're going to take where we are going to actually take and make one giant FLA with all of our pictures in it has just the opposite uh, advantage and disadvantage. That is, you load everything when you load the initial animation. But the plus of that is, is that going from screen to screen is very easy because everything's loaded all at once. So the bottom line is, you know, if someone's going to view your, your uh, slideshow, they're going to have to view, they're going to have to download the bytes for the images and the animations that they want to view. The question is, is do you do that all up front or do you spread that out? Spreading it out is especially appealing if you think that they might not view all of them. All right? Because then they don't have to load all of them. So let's go and let's create this with HTML. We'll go over this. This is probably, in my mind, if, if you're at all conversant with HTML, this is probably the most straightforward way to do it. We'll talk about other options. I don't know if we'll get to them today. Uh, if not, we'll get to them uh, next week. Again, keep in mind these are relevant for both your, um, both your uh, uh, photo gallery and for your uh, semester project. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make, I have my two images here, just two of the flower images that I took from the Windows, <coughs> from the Windows uh, sample pictures, and I'm going to make a thumbnail for them. Now, one thing that I would urge you to do is a thumbnail doesn't have to be 
an exact copy of the larger image. You can actually do some clever things if you um, don't make it. There's a couple advantages to not making it uh, uh, just merely a smaller version of the full image. First of all, if you're mixing some images that are oriented portrait with some that are oriented landscape, that can make your grid of thumbnails look all jaggedy and, and not very lined up very well. What you can do then is you can crop your images to a consistent size. You might make them squares, for example. And that way, regardless of whether it's oriented vertically or horizontally, um, the squares that comprise the thumbnails will line up correctly. So that's one reason uh, for doing that. Another reason is you can maybe create a sense of intrigue uh, in the thumbnail by not showing all the picture, but by showing some of it. So we're going to take an approach kind of like that uh, in this example. So, I'm going to go in, and just for laughs, I'm going to go in and I'm going to flip this image so it's oriented vertically, just so I can illustrate a little better what I'm talking about. And I'm also going to make the thumbnail only be part of the picture, not the entire picture. I can also do some clever things, for example, having a black and white version of the picture as a thumbnail um, to emphasize it. Um, a lot of different things that you could do. Now remember, we had our fun on Monday. So no more fun this semester. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so the effects that you choose to do for your picture gallery should be purposeful. All right. Last time we were going crazy, you know, bringing things in, making clowns look evil, making birds look gigantic, all that sort of thing, just, just largely to experiment with the tools. But again, now the things that we do, we should do in a purposeful manner. So pay attention to that as, as you're going forward. All right. Yeah. Yes. I noticed that you mentioned that when you click on a picture in the web, uh -huh. web page, that you call that an animation. Is that an animation? What did I call an animation? When you click on the picture. Well, what I'm going to do? Oh, you mean in that navigation up there? Yeah. It's yeah, it's going to the the, the thumbnail is going to be an image, and it's going to when you click on it, it's going to be a link to load an animation of the of the picture. Oh, so just, I, I didn't I didn't read right. Well, yeah, just uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see what I, I mean. I think just, of the animation. I think of like moving parts in a. Well, it will be moving. Just watch. Bear with me. Oh, All right. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to go in and I'm going to rotate this. So it's now oriented vertically, and I'm going to save it. All right. So now I'm going to go in and crop it so that um, I have two thumbnails that are the same size and are oriented the same way. Because if I were to make these two thumbnails, one of them being oriented vertically and one being horizontally, they wouldn't line up very well. So I'll go in here. I'll edit this picture. And what I'll do is maybe I will go in and select an area like this and I will crop where did this go? Image crop. All right. Then I'm going to go in and look at the size of that because I want to make it a perfect square. Now, I can resize it a couple different ways. I can actually resize the image or scale the image, or I can go in and set the canvas size. Uh, setting the canvas size is another way to crop out uh, some stuff. So let's look at set canvas size. This is 396 by 350, so I'm not bad just eyeballing it. I got it pretty close. I, however, am going to make it 350 by 350. 
So that'll be the size of our thumbnail. So I'll go and click on that so that it doesn't size them in proportion. And I'll make the width of this 350. So my, and then I can position it the way I want. All right, resize. I'm going to save as one thumb because that's the thumbnail for picture one. And I'll do the same thing for picture two. So I will go in and I'll select maybe one of these and crop it. It's here a minute ago. Look at the canvas size. Canvas size is now 411, so I'll go make this 350 by 350. And resize. Save as two thumb. And now I have two thumbnails, and even though the two pictures are oriented differently, the, the thumbnails uh, match up, and the thumbnails will line up really neatly. And um, <coughs> instead of just making a thumbnail a smaller version of the picture, I've chosen pieces of the picture that I thought were particularly interesting, maybe to draw attention to it, and, and so that they could see the whole thing. All right, so I have my two images and my two thumbnails. Now here comes the animation part, because I'm going to make two animations for each of these. All right? Or, or I'm going to make two animations, one for each of these. So I'll go in, and I will uh, start up Flash. And I'll make an animation for the first one, and then I'll make an animation for the second one. Now what can this animation be? This animation can be anything we want it to be. We've talked about all the techniques that we can use. We could have it zoom in. We could have it slide in from the side. We could have it fade in. Um, really anything that we want to do, um, we're able to do. That's, that's your job. It can include text, all right, in, in the animation. Uh, one thing I've noticed in the photo gallery is sometimes people take it a little too literal, and all it is is a bunch of photos, you know. A photo gallery can be more than just a bunch of photos, right? There can be explanations of the, of the thing, uh, something that sort of ties everything together. All right, I'm going to go make a animation for picture one. And so I will go in and import to stage that first picture. picture. All right. I will go and convert to symbol. try to do something different. Maybe I'll just... We'll have it fade in that way. We'll start with the dark screen and we'll fade it in. So, um, I'll go and set the brightness of this. I'm going to resize it too to be a better size. 400... Oh, 
bigger, or a little smaller, rather, 300, there we go. Alright, so, and then I'll go and I'll create my motion tween, and out over here I will then go and set the brightness to something like that. So that's the animation for that picture. All right. So now I'll go and save this as pick one on my desktop. And I'll also publish it. So I get the SWF. Saved it in documents. Let's save it instead on the desktop. All right, there we go. All right, and let's do the same thing for picture two. Let's bring in the second one. And we will resize it to be a certain size. Did you want to do that with the, just the one tool? No. No. That's a, the one tool is a thumbnail. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'll go here and I will modify to create a symbol. And I will go in here, and maybe this one we will change the alpha. We'll make it transparent to start. Go create our motion tween. And in the last frame, make it fully visible. So I'll go and save this. Let's pick two. And I'll go and publish this. Now I have the building blocks that I want to assemble into a little little website, if you will. All right. I have these two big images aren't going to appear on my site directly. They're only going to appear as part of the animation. I will have pick one and pick two. Pick one and pick two each contain their respective animations. Probably should have put in there not to loop it, but we can go back and correct that later. Pick one, comes in like this. Now I have to make sort of a page that's going to be my home page and navigation, and then add that navigation to each of those. So what I'll do is I'll create a HTML page. Let me just go in and create um, a new text document. Are there questions? Well, what is this for? I, I believe I said it a couple Either times. Or. Pardon me? Either or. This could be for the photo gallery. This could be for the final project. Okay. All right. Let's go in and show extensions. And I'm going to go in and rename this to index 
that HTML. And again, do keep in mind, this isn't doing this in HTML. This is creating an HTML container to hold your different Flash animations. So let's go in and edit this in Notepad++. And I'm just going to put a very rudimentary um, navigation in here. Um, I'm not going to make a complete polished web page, but you all can go in and fill the gaps for that. So what I can do is I can create a nav section. And a content section. And in the nav section, I can put my thumbnails. So I can go image, or actually a, href equals, what do I call that? One thumb, uh, I don't want that. I want, I call it pick, pick one dot swf. I want the SWF, or actually pick one .html. And I do the same thing for number two. Then in the, the div on the home page, I can just say something like, uh, here are some flowers I like, blah, 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 blah. Click on thumbnail. All right. Now I have this. Thumbnail's still pretty big. I click on that, and it brings in that animation. All right. Now, how to make it consistent, um, what I'd do is I'd go into this, and I would add... I would then go in, and I would add to those other two pages, my navigation code. And I'd probably go and change the, uh, I can keep the div as flash content, I suppose. Let me go make those thumbnails a little smaller because those are kind of ridiculous. go and scale the image. Now I'm not cropping out of it. I'm scaling the image. I'm making it maybe 25% of its original size. So I'll go into percentage 25, 25, scale, save. And I'll do the same thing to the other one. So 
So now when I go and look at it, I have my home page. If I click on those, I get the, uh, the that. I click on that, I get the other animation. So we piece together bits of this in HTML and bits of it in Flash. Now, what are the advantages of doing it this way? The advantage of doing it this way are, first of all, as far as your Flash development goes, it breaks that up. You only have to do one little simple animation in each, in each, um, in each FLA, and, and that really simplifies things quite a bit. Um, if you know HTML, then you can go and you can uh, create that. There would be the possibility. Let's say, for example, uh, we wanted to expand this and maybe make this work on an iPad, for example, that doesn't support Flash. We could do some browser detection and find out that it's an iPad. And instead of loading the animation, we could load up the image. All right, that would be uh, something we could do. So, again, this is sort of mixing having Flash within uh, HTML documents and having a set of linked HTML documents that each contain an animation. That's one way of achieving navigation. And again, for both your gallery and your uh, final project, you'll need some kind of navigation. Now, I said it was okay for your gallery if you just want to have it play like a slideshow. So you can still do that in, in no, no harm, no foul. But you might want to play around with this because it's really not that hard. In, in a lot of respects, it's easier. This has the advantage, again, of that you only load what you need. If I go and visit this and I look at the yellow flowers but not the orange one, I've not downloaded those number of bytes associated with the animation for the orange flower. If I put everything in one giant FLA file, <coughs> excuse me, then I have the issue of... of uh, I'm downloading everything. I'm downloading all the images all at once. Now, then to see each image is going to be less because I don't have to download it. But, again, you can either load everything now or load as needed. Yes? So you would still have an HTML page instead of doing the image project in Flash? Is that what you're saying? No. 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 The HTML page is simply a page that allows you to have a container for all your different flash animations. Yeah, you didn't yeah, exactly. They would be there. You'd have the ones that didn't have the special effects with the special in that Yeah, I mean is is your design as far as what you're doing as far as the images go? You know, I would assume that, that you're doing something with them. Maybe you're fading them in, maybe you're having them slide in, maybe you're having them get bigger. All right, so whatever your 10 images are, you'll have those 10 separate animations, and then you can bring everything together through a set of HTML documents. All right, just like I did here. I created a, a flash animation for my two images. I created a thumbnail for each of my two images, and then I uh, put on HTML documents a little navigation that allows me to go between those animations and a, uh, you know, and, and, and the respective flash animation so I can talk to page. Yes? So then when we submit it in a zip folder, you have your HTML file, all the thumbnails, and then all the... Well, you have multiple HTML files. You have, you have to, you have to give me everything, right? I mean, I, you can't, you know, think about what does this need to work? This needs the HTML files, all right? You know, Sending, sending a zip file with 100 files, and it really is no different than sending, uh, you know, an HTML file or a zip file with three files in it, right? So um, there will be more files, but each individual file will be small. All right? So six of one, half dozen of the other. That's one way to do it. Let's explore some other ways to do it. And um, there probably would be three other ways to do it that I can think of. And you might be able to come up with another one. And we sort of looked at some of those already. Let's go and look. Let me download 